I think we can all agree that when it comes to the group of friends that came up with Joe Rogan's help, also known as the Rogan Sphere, Tom Segura and his wife Christina P arguably built one of the biggest comedy platforms not named the Joe Rogan Experience. Because back then, they were pulling over 10 million monthly views on their YouTube channel alone. And it was well deserved. I mean, they had a very unique thing going on with the YMH podcast and Tom Segura was and it still is a legit comic. However, most recently, it's very clear that Tom Segura has stopped focusing on his craft and instead has been chasing money, taking on so many projects, new business ventures, and even doing insane personal moves that would essentially contribute to him burning out. And now it's undeniable that the entire channel's quality has dropped massively and it's now even affecting Tom Segura's own humor and stand-up comedy. And look, yes, technically and on paper, they're still a massively successful production company and a massive YouTube channel. There's no doubt about that. However, when you start to closely look at some of the numbers, some of the fans' feedback, and some of the decisions that they have taken uh, for the show, it's very clear that Tom Segura and Christina have now completely abandoned the one thing that got them to where they are now, their show and their humor. And I highly recommend you watch the entire video because there's a lot of fresh and interesting stuff throughout. So let's get started. So I started to take fitness more seriously, I'd say, in the last year, you know? And so some people notice and they go, you know, congratulations, or that's great, you know, keep going. Like they positive. And then you always find some people who go, uh, must be nice. And right. you're like, what must be nice? And they're like, I mean, it must be nice that you can afford to, uh, you know, go to the gym. And like, I'm like, wait, wait, wait. So right. is your position that only people with money are into fitness right, and take care of themselves? I'm, I'm so jealous of your weight loss. <laughs> Holy. Do it. You can do it. What are you doing? Uh, testosterone. Stick it in three times a week. And Th then. Is that that honey? That, that. Yeah. It's like, it's just a little shot. So you and eat then, whatever you want? No, no. Okay. <laughs> so at a glance, is that, a, that looks like a lovely timepiece. Can I see it? Oh, sure. What is that? Uh, it's called Waldo. It's actually kind of an underground brand and they're not outrageously expensive. Oh, that's too bad. Watch guys. Um, <laughs> yeah. That looks but they make cool, a, they man. make an affordable tourbillon. That's really cool, man. Thank it's you. Pretty. I, I don't have an endorsement or anything. I just no, no. I just, I mean, I just noticed it, and so sometimes the poor get mad when they watch. But this is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the biggest criticisms that I've seen about Tom Segura online from his own fans that I kind of have to agree with is the fact that they both massively changed when it comes to their personality and even becoming a little bit unlikable. Because back then, it, it was very easy for the fans to pick on Christina P, make fun of her, because she would have some pretty insane takes and say the wildest things. For example, she would try to psychoanalyze people that she's never met through videos until she eventually got called out by Bill Burr in a clip in a video that is now uh, that has now aged very, very well. Uh, therapy, yeah, I went to therapy. You went, but you stopped going? Well, after a while, it's just like, well, you know, I've told all the bad stories, and I'm always going to have problems. This is just becoming like this, you know, lifelong car payment now to have to come over here. Be like, well, this happened. Yeah. My garage door was locked, and I just, I just felt like a after a while. Like, when are you going to just, you know, get off th this fucking couch here and go live your life and stop having to talk to this fucking person? <sighs> yeah, you're full of anger. <laughs> Because no. you, you flog yourself for, for being vulnerable. Oh, so would you stop it yeah. like you have some sort of psychology degree? Ten years in therapy. I, it's so what? It's I've watched football anger. for 40 years. I shouldn't be somebody's coach. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. You, I'm you, not your therapist. Then, but then, I, then I, you're going to like superimpose your issues of the psychos in your life onto me. And back then, a lot of people did point out that Tom Segura was a little bit too happy to see somebody like Bill Burr finally call out his wife for saying some wild stuff. But now he's kind of jumping on the same train. But when it comes to Tom, the fans like to point towards different things to try and explain why he's becoming unlikable. A lot of people blame the move to Texas, saying that him leaving LA somehow made him more Hollywood, which is funny. Um, also, the massive uh, body transformation, the uh, health journey that he went through was pretty crazy. And finally, the money situation him getting a lot of money during the past three years. But I don't think it's really any of those things. And instead, it comes down to him being greedy. And so, but I heard the lead singer say something where he was like, you know, with meet and greets, he was like, I, I, I urge any 
artist, comic, musician, whatever, doing meet and greets, instead of going through Ticketmaster, paid meet and greets, instead of going through Ticketmaster or your agent, have the fan give you $25 cash and then take the picture and see how you feel. And I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah, no. That is that's exactly how I can feel. That's what you're doing. Yeah. And I, that's what, and now I'm not yeah. doing, and I feel the same as you, obviously at a much lower level where I'm like, you know, I'm charging my fans less. Yeah. I'm still making enough money that my, I can live my life the way I want. I don't need to, I got greedy in 2022 and I, I hated myself. And now it's like. I yeah. can't do it anymore. I still try to stay down yeah. under what I could charge. But it's not like it was then. That was the heyday. I'll never see that again. And you shouldn't. You should right. only have. We should have like a big spike in life, and yeah, and then find a cruising altitude. Yeah, you can't stay at the top forever. No, you can't. And funny enough, Louis C.K. said something similar to Bert Kreischer on Two Bears One Cave when he was on last time, and it he nailed it right on the head, and it applies perfectly to Tom Segura about discovering somebody young, hungry, and then and then them becoming way too busy and not paying attention to the craft. Because we have mentioned this before, but Tom Segura was discovered by Joe Rogan himself, personally. He liked, he thought he was very funny and brought him on on tour to open for him. So literally handpicked by Joe Rogan. Then Tom Segura was very early on uh, with the podcast and started in 2011, started his YouTube channel in 2011, which was honestly the best time to start a podcast back then and it paid off now keep in mind that back then tom and christina were one of the first comics to turn their youtube channel into a successful podcast studio where they would produce other shows and great shows and it eventually pushed a lot of other people to do the same even brendan shaba uh, always bringing up tom segura when he would talk about business and studios and what his goals were in terms of comedy however just like brendan shaba found out there's only so many hours in a day and playing the CEO role takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So naturally, the question is, with a massive or with a packed schedule like Tom Segura's, when does he have time to think about new jokes or even try out new material? I was like, okay, I go, I'm very interested. And then like we talked about, my schedule has been daunting, dude. My schedule has been daunting for a while. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, this is like month 14 of this tour and it's, still going hard yeah. and it's like we've been doing this we do this podcast at your mom's house you know i've got other things going i had the book come out i have an, another project we have a project yeah i'm traveling i'm doing eight nine shows a week sometimes and like it's been crazy right yeah so i was like look i just i tried to prioritize i really, I really want to do this and i found a date that i could do it i literally flew home one day the next day i went and I said I wanted a private, like, I don't want to be there with fucking uh -uh, six no. people. And look, you do got to give him props for being an insane hard worker because I do remember last year, a lot of comics uh, on their own podcast, they would bring up Tom Segura and bring up the fact that he was doing an insane world tour and still had two massive podcasts and was still doing other projects. He was do, he was going crazy. And what shocks me the most is that now that his insane world tour is over, he literally just announced another uh, coming together world tour that is going to be even crazier which is again it's pretty insane it leads us to the next point when did he have time to work out the material the new hour that he's doing on his new tour because from what i've heard from other comics to come up with a good bit it takes a long long time and it usually has to be tested in front of crowds that don't really know you and although i haven't been keeping up with tom segura uh, all the time i don't think he's done that many clubs. I mean, he did the mothership and apparently he will be testing that whole material out next month at the Tempe Improv. But to me, it sounds like he already has it ready to go. It's all written and laid out and he's just going there to make sure that it actually uh, works out. But I mean, if you have a sold out club um, on December 20th in Tempe, I think the crowd will be very, very happy to see you. So um, again, if that is the case that somebody wrote that for him and he's just performing it, does that change anything for you guys or not? Nah? Um, do you know my favorite stuff of yours is uh, Tom Segura? <laughs> That's going to go viral. I was hoping, <laughs> I actually don't know who the hell you are. I was hoping you were, you were Tom. Yeah, I And know. I saw you and I was like, oh, it's the, the, it's the fat guy. It's Shit. the fat guy. <laughs> uh, not the smart, funny guy. <laughs> The, oh yeah oh, I get that it's, a the, lot. it's the topless tummy guy i get that a lot i get that yeah. a lot yeah <laughs> so say hi to him and i don't know if he's got any room on his podcast sadly you'd have to vote republican and go to austin 
Wow. Yeah, I know. They're very actors, him and his wife. Hardcore pro -abor pro pro anti abortion. Okay. They're yeah. pro anti abortion. They just don't right. want women to choose what they do with their bodies. Yeah, but he's so funny. Yeah, I he's know. So smart. It's crazy. The guy who writes this act, I, oh. I'm good friends with. Okay. Yeah. 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 He's funny. You gotta hang out with that guy. Oh my guy. god. Yeah, he's great. Okay. Yeah, okay. But, no, Tom, Tom Tom's a great performer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Once he gets that script out a couple times, it takes him a while, but he's good. That's good. And the whole, uh... Now I do remember seeing that a while back, and I was surprised that no one picked up on it because although you could argue that Bert Kreischer was kidding around, it sounded more like a cry for help after getting completely after getting his ego completely destroyed by Rain Wilson, also known as Dwight because he was going in pretty hard, basically letting him know that he wanted to do Tom's podcast and not his, which makes sense. And look, we all know that it's not uncommon for huge comedians to get the help from ghostwriters to write their jokes. But I do wonder if people would care if somebody, if a comedian like Tom Segura wasn't writing his own jokes 100%. Because I'll be honest, if his last comedy special, Sledgehammer, was actually great, if it was like the, the best thing I've heard or seen in a while, I would understand why he wanted to use, he wanted the help, you know, to make a, a better product. But it wasn't that crazy, which makes me think that he's not using it to make a better product and give more to the fans, but instead possibly relying on it because he doesn't have enough time to do the basics. Once again, there's no way to confirm that, but if it was true, it would show you that he's just putting less and less effort into the things that got him to where he's at, including the podcast, like putting no effort into researching the guest or even just doing the basics to the point where he will be in front of a massive guest and be totally unprepared and then drop the ball. And by the way, I just wanted to take a quick second to give you guys a huge thank you. We just received the uh, 100,000 subscriber plaque and uh it's pretty unreal uh, i don't want to make this too much about myself but uh, i mean it's needless to say that you guys have definitely changed my life and i'm shocked that there's a community that enjoys all the same things that i enjoy and it's it's crazy but uh yeah thank you so much um i really appreciate that but uh yeah thank you a long time and that even how great you love the scene the scene has nothing to do you know if it's not fitting if it's not part of you know if it's yeah. hurting things that happen later if it's not setting up what you want it to yeah and you don't know until you see it yeah so you always shoot stuff you don't use always um yeah i'm excited to uh to finish it i'm i'm, I'm halfway through. halfway through it yeah yeah no and it's like a series of yes yeah, it's like a game of thrones it's thing. a game of thrones thing it takes no but it is really and watch the whole movie i'm i oh. yeah you should, you should watch <laughs> i can't it wait to watch it um <laughs> you can get that uh lewisck.com you can get his fx show louis yes. yeah uh it's a real treat. Thank you for oh, my pleasure. For, for coming and uh, congrats on the book. Well, okay, you said you've been reading it for a little bit. All right, uh, where where are you up to now? Um, I don't know. You uh, are talking about going to you've started oh, to go to opening the chapter. Yeah, <laughs> but I didn't read it. I told you that. I know, boy, you were still listening. to I it. was listening okay. to it. Yeah, so you've yeah. listened to the open yeah. half of the opening hey, chapter. <laughs> I I I got now, now it. Where 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 in the opening chapter did you did, did you arrive at? Did you okay? Hey, I, I'll when answer. you listen to it today for the first time, not as today. you drove from your house no, to the to, not to today. the studio today, not today. When you pulled up today, I where was to it? I swear to God, not today. <laughs> and I'll tell you where I am. You're at the movies. Okay, that's where. It doesn't take away from the fact that I'm a genuine fan. Okay, yeah, no, no, it doesn't. And uh, I. Um, I asked good questions. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Um, yes, you did. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to f exactly. this. <laughs> um, Could have been a little bit more in depth on the manuscript that I'm here to talk about, but nevertheless, nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> and in my opinion louis ck is technically the quentin tarantino of comedy and comedy shows for that matter so now watching the movie that he's there to promote is pretty wild now obviously it's not realistic for tom to research every single guest that comes on the show but <laughs> when you're talking about louis ck going to a comedy podcast or one of the oldest comedy podcasts out there i think it would have been the right thing the right move to at least watch a movie that you could bring up to Louis C.K. I mean, the big selling point of a podcast with a person like Quentin Tarantino or Louis C.K. is the fact that you can ask a lot of very interesting questions. It's uh, it's part of what got Joe Rogan to be 
as big as he is. He would actually have people on that he was interested in and would consume their stuff, either read a book, watch their documentary or whatever, or their YouTube video. But the way that he feels for Tom Segura is almost like he's looking at it like they're just a time slot on a schedule and he just has to do it for work. Zero preparation. He probably doesn't even care that much. And you might be thinking, who wouldn't be excited to interview Louis C.K. or Quentin Tarantino? And I don't think it's about that. I think it's a combination of Tom being massively successful for the past 10 years or maybe five to eight years. Um, his book deals, Netflix deals, uh, the massive YouTube channel, the world tour. I think all of that has really inflated his ego to the point where he thinks he's probably bigger than somebody like Louis C.K. and Quentin Tarantino. And I think a perfect example of that was the time that him and Joe Rogan went on Kill, on the Kill Tony live show and had a very awkward and uh, interesting appearance, to say the least. You're the ones to be up here. You guys ready to take this show to a whole nother level or what? Ladies and gentlemen, it's a goddamn honor for me to introduce one of the greatest regulars in the history of the show. Moved here to Austin, Texas a couple years ago. A little nervous? Is that why your entire lower half is shaking right now? That is incredible. Do we have a camera zoomed in on that for the love of God? Holy sh**. That is unbelievable. That is the energy in this room right now is running through this man. Yeah, you gotta love to see it. It's amazing. You just did 3,000 people, man. What's fucking crazy? This is insane. <laughs> I've never. Bro, look at your leg. I cannot believe it. It, go. it has a mind of its own. Now, I remember watching that Kill Tony episode and being shocked at how little Joe Rogan and Tom Segura added to the entire show, the entire two hours. It was pretty wild. But at least when it comes to Joe Rogan and those type of situations, he kind of did what he always does. It's not like he's the quickest off the top, you know, with the jokes. But when it comes to Tom Segura, he was extremely quiet, like way, way different than the last time that he was on or the, the, the most recent time that he was on Kill Tony. And one of the things that a lot of people, including myself, noticed was him and Joe Rogan just whispering to each other a lot of times. Instead of saying something into the mic, they would just whisper to each other in, uh, on the ear and then laugh in the back and uh, kind of had their own thing going on, which is kind of weird. And keep in mind that this was Kill Tony's 10th anniversary show. So pretty big deal. I think they said they sold out the entire 3,000 seats in under an hour or in a few hours. And it's the biggest show they've uh, performed in front of. So again, pretty big deal. And you could argue that maybe Joe Rogan and Tom weren't trying to steal uh, the show from Tony, but... I don't know. I don't know if that's a good excuse. And I think they would have added more. The show would have been a lot better if they would have been uh, adding to the show. And to me, it just looked like Tom Segura wasn't even trying at all. Maybe he thought that him being present at the show was good enough. And eventually, Tom uh, Tony Hinchcliffe made a joke hinting towards uh, nobody making any jokes until finally Red Band stepped in about 40 minutes into the show. Let me ask you this. Does your leg ever shake when you go on a date with a girl or anything like that? What was that? Does your leg ever shake when like you're when you when you like a girl? No. That never it's just a strictly a stand-up comedy thing. Mm -hmm. Has it ever happened outside of stand-up comedy? I don't believe so. Wow. Yeah, Incredible. It's... You should do comedy while you're a girl. She would really appreciate it. <laughs> Yay, Red Band. Red Band. Oh shit, the lights have been activated. <laughs> Red Band. Oh my God, for those of you in Vegas that picked Red Band to have the best joke this deep into the episode, you just won $9 billion. <laughs> and if you compare that to the last time that he was on the Kill Tony show, it's a night and day difference. It's pretty wild. I think it shows you how disconnected he has become even from comedy because at this point, everybody knows what Kill Tony is about, especially Tom. So to go there and to just be completely quiet for over for almost two hours and the fact that Tom wasn't able to put anything together and make anything happen up there is pretty wild. And it just shows you that he's not even in the headspace to think about comedy and being funny. He's just basically going through the motions at this point. I mean, there was a perfect opportunity to roast that lady that was pretty bad and everybody else was making fun of. But instead, him and Joe Rogan turned it into a therapy session, giving out 
with a weird as advice that everybody has already heard to the point where Joe Rogan was basically begging for Tom to add anything to the to the conversation and saved it and he didn't. He also stepped in and gave the most generic advice ever. Um, yeah. You know, I'm sorry. It's you know. no, don't apologize. It's a hard road. And yeah. there's no classes on how to do it and everybody tries to do it their own way. And uh, it's, it's hard to figure out. <laughs> oh, God. That's terrible. Stop that. It's hard to figure out. And everybody has to do it their own way, but you, you gotta, gotta get, get to the point quicker. You can't have people knowing exactly what you're talking about the entire time you're talking about it. Because then yeah. you just keep saying words, and, you know. So. And it's only a minute, you're Cut right. Cut to the chase. Absolutely. You don't, Tom? Need, you don't need to save money for an operation to cut your material down, you know what I mean? <laughs> Tom, any pointers? I will do that. I no. That was a, no? Uh, well, I mean... It, it, yeah, I, I would have thought that you would have thought, I have a minute. Now, a lot of people like to call them sellouts, and at least when it comes to Joe Rogan, I, I never thought he was a sellout when, when he took that Spotify deal. I mean, I would listen to him religiously every single episode, and when he made the move, I just saw it as him moving to a different platform different platform not going to listen to him as much anymore but i still enjoy it and i still think that he's doing the exact same thing um, that he would have done if he stayed on youtube however with tom segura it is a little bit different because the expectations as a comic in my opinion are, are a little bit higher since he is a very talented stand-up comedian so when it comes to tom the fact that he stopped doing the thing that he was really good at and has essentially just started chasing the money it does kind of feel like he's selling out because again, if the thing about him having writers is 100% true, it would 100% make me believe that he's a sellout. I don't know what else to call it. And I think Tony is actually doing it the right way, the way it's supposed to be done. He's 100% dialed in on his craft, on his comedy. He listens to the fans. He has, uh, um, he, I saw him two weeks ago at the Celebrity Theater and his new hour is completely insane. It'll be one of the wildest comedy specials of the year for sure. And not only that, but he also had uh, Cam Patterson and uh, David Lucas open for him. So again, he is listening to the fans. He knows what it, what his fan, fan base likes and is interacting with them instead of just, you know, pouring and dumping a bunch of content that who knows if they like it or not just for money. And you could argue that he's just making hay while the sun is shining. But I think at this point, he's made so much hay that he's now just building storages and and piling it piling it up and then now growing shittier hay instead of focusing on better quality one. I found her purse and they're like, "That's nice. Like you're a nice person." I go, "Yeah, of course. I'm not." <laughs> like I'm wearing a cashmere coat. Like what do you think? <laughs> so you looked so attractive the, in that picture. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. Did. You did. You did. You've not been an attractive guy your whole life. You were when you were young, and then you had a window of like messy Tom, which I. Miss so much. Yeah, yeah. I, the Tom that carried hot sauce in his car. I miss that Tom. You always so say that. Much. That was Christina's hot no, sauce. No, no, no. We've changed. We're we're unrelatable now. It's fine. I like this one. You like this one? Yeah, I like. Okay. Dude, I'm unrelatable too now. I do tobacco. Yeah, it's awesome. So it feels great. I run into it Andrew, great. and I personally don't think that Tom Segura's weight loss had anything to do with him being less funny or losing his sense of humor. Of course not. Even though it's funny because uh, Burt Kreischer actually plays around with that, and I've seen it commented a lot. But again, I think it's more of a situation where he put on he he uh, put on a lot of things on his plate, including the body transformation, working out, and and since he's not getting any material out of it like i don't think i've seen any great jokes about working out and getting in shape not that i can remember so he's taking it a little bit way too serious more like the joe rogan route which is fair but i think he kind of forgets that at some point he was also massive he was he was pretty big once again i still think he's very talented so i it's not like a situation where i thought he was funnier when he was way bigger not at all if anything I think probably 2020 Tom was peak and he was not that big, you know what I mean? So once again, when you think about the fact that he's back on a massive world comedy tour, has a very strict diet and is trying to keep uh, three or two different podcasts afloat, it kind of explains and it's reasonable to think that he's completely burned out. And also the fact that they have to bank episodes, that means that in one day, in one sitting, they have to record up to four or five different podcasts think about that that's essentially six to eight hours of just straight recording and pretending that every new episode is it's fresh and uh, brand new conversations that's 
that takes a toll. So that's another negative of banking so many episodes, both for uh, Two Bears, One Cave and for YMH Studios. Now, obviously, when it comes to Tom Segura and we're talking about a downfall, we're referring to more of a, an artistic and creative downfall because obviously on paper, and if you look at the numbers, they're, they're both still insanely successful. They're, they're, they're huge. And honestly, at their level, Tom Segura is rock bottom. I will probably never reach that ever in my life. So it's just a whole different ball game. However, when you do look at some of the numbers specifically, it does tell you a very, very interesting story. And since then, they essentially hit a wall where they couldn't break through around 10 to 11 million monthly uh, views until recently when they had two shorts actually go completely insane. They blew up and, brew in, and brought in insane amounts of traffic. Um, something similar happened to the Fighter and the Kid channel where two of their shorts literally drove over 12 million views to their channel and a lot of new subs. But ever since that happened, they've just essentially been comfortably cruising down and haven't really came up with anything new. Besides uh, the, besides them gifting each other uh, insane gifts and Tom Segura giving them the teacup, which was pretty funny. Besides that, they really got nothing besides the basic drama of, you know, Bert's drinking and Tom Segura lashing out at his fans. And funny enough, when it comes to their YouTube channel, it now feels like it's a, an algorithm or like an AI that it's pumping out ideas of what they think is going to get views. Because before Dr. Drew was killing it, I mean, he still is, but he was doing very, very well. Um, the Danny Brown show was uh, was killing it because keep in mind that a solo podcast is extremely hard and he was pulling it off very, very well. But now they reduce his show to under 40 minutes, sometimes even closer to 30 minutes. They added another dating show and they are both now um, heavily relying on guests. Back then, I don't think Danny Brown had any guests at all. And now they are guest driven episodes. So, so very weird moves. And it just shows you that there's no structure anymore. Like, the, like there used to be. And they're just basically throwing stuff and seeing what sticks. And look, we covered this before, but when it comes to artists and entertainers, a lot of them can get away with doing a lot of stuff, changing from one thing to another. And the fans will still support them and love them. If they keep supplying them with a thing that they love them for, if that person just completely stops. If they put out just crap and nobody likes it and they stop supplying the fans with the stuff they love, it's a one-sided relationship and just it's not going to work. And same thing with Tom Segura. I mean, he can become shredded. He can become the next Joe Rogan. He can become an actor and do whatever he wants as long as he continues to supply his original fan base. Obviously, now there's a lot of people leaving to other shows. There's new fans coming in. So who knows if he might be trying to do that on purpose or not. But... Uh, yeah, if he just stops making the comedy that he used to, I don't think that's going to work out in the long in the long run. And it's been pretty weird seeing Tom Segura going down this route because a few months back, I, me I remember thinking that there's no way that he would ever become the next Brendan Schaub. And now, I mean, I don't think it'll ever happen, but damn, that possibility, that's looking more possible day by day. At the end of the day, in my opinion, he's actually a legit comic and if he wants to, he can have a massive comeback and be one of the goats in comedy. But if not, um, I think he'll have a he'll continue to have a massively successful business and uh, continue to tour until he can't no more. So, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Dislike if you didn't like the video. But that is all we have for today. See ya.